It is a cool night in Hycantius' southern half, even more so than the north. Close to the water, the air is warmer despite the sun having set hours ago, but with the city being situated on a small shelf jutting out from the mountain that watches over it, and thus elevated, it's slightly better than its neighbours, if you like the cold, that is. It isn't as cold in the temple district, of course, with their burning altars. The area between here and there is littered with shops and houses that aren't so cold either, and the Tiersi's Manor, just north of where we stand, will have all of its fires blazing. But this is the Park of Pan, far away from any fire, far away from the sea. It is not warm here. The park itself is more of a municipal forest. An obligation to Pan, a tribute to the god of nature, thus trading caravans are lost to the wild. It takes the form of a roughly circular valley filled with trees. In the centre, a humble altar to the Lord of the Wild sits in a clearing, invisible from above and covered in vines. The various types of tree coexist with each other harmoniously. The smaller bushes and plants around them varied and unique. The odd lineage patches of each species make it seem more like they were planted by some divine gardener than a real, wild forest. Pan's altar is unlit this night, as always. It is said that if a sacrifice is accepted, a book, sacred and huge, will come and eat it as you watch. For this reason, many stay in the clearing for hours on end, waiting. It is here, in the Park of Pan, that we find our heroes. Rinthia Child, Elven Ranger, new in town, yet no stranger to sights like these. Varys, an Elven Warlock and Traveller, looking for a way to spend to what she suspects will be her only night in this town. Ara, Elven Bard, reading beneath a tree, trying to relax, trying not to think about what she plans to do. Kesmira Hadrion, tiefling cleric of Persephone, gathering offerings for her temple. Rowan Blackmarsh, halfling rogue, who has found their way here by accident, lost arm roots some town with a name they can barely pronounce. What? Uh, what in the world? Sounds like it's coming from the manor. Oh, that's wonderful. Lying on the cobblestones are Ara's feet in the shadows of Litiancy's manor as a dragonborn woman. She's dressed in the kind of finery Ara has never been able to afford in her life, but that's not what catches Ara's attention. No, Ara is more focused on the natural angle of the woman's neck, the bruises forming on her arms, the glassy look in her eyes, and the trickle of blood seeping out from the corner of her mouth. The others find themselves distracted by some other thing, namely the man jumping from tree to tree, heading steadily away from the manor. Hey, what the hell? Uh, what you doing? Sacred flame. I'd like to see him avoid. God damn it! I don't think we'll catch him in time. He's gone. <sighs> yep. The body shouldn't stay there. I just wanted to read a book, not get involved in a murder mystery. She looks like a fancy noble lady. This is... This was... Formerly the Magistrate Latiris's wife. Spotlight shines down the crime scene. Rowan is hunched over the body. Varys, Ara, and Casimira are stood a few feet away, all frozen in the sudden brightness. Just outside the light, cloaked in shadow, Rin crouches amongst the brush, waiting, watching. Stay where you are. Nobody move. We have trained archers on the roof with arrows pointed at each of your throats. Uh, we can just tell them what happened and describe that tree guy and we should be okay. Wait, no, I was framed, y'all. She was pushed out by the tree man. Wait, that sounds dumb. Fuck. Would you please stop making it worse? Anyone here rich? You could, like, pay so we can escape? I don't know. If you move, they fire. Prepare for the arrival of the magistrate.
Magistrate Lydia sees makes her way onto the scene, flanked by guards. She's a tiefling, simply dressed, with sharp eyes and an even sharper expression. Uh, guys? Why do you keep looking at me like that? Y'all? Do you know whose wife you just murdered? I didn't murder nobody. I couldn't have done this. She was pushed, honestly. Your Honor, I am aware of how this looks, but your culprit is making all due haste south. Do you really think this wee thing could have pushed her off a balcony from down here? Silence. Look, I know. The culprit was our husband, Judas. I can't let the guards know and thus the city. Not yet. Losing one's lover tonight is bad enough. If the city knew I was down both, I would almost certainly be the talk of the town, and frankly, I don't need that. So play along, okay? Oh, man, you sure got me there. Come with me. I am well trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and if you try to escape, I will break your neck. Not my neck. Even you there, in the shadows. Rin slinks reluctantly out of the shadows and joins the others as they follow Lityerses into the manor, flanked by guards all the way down to the basement. Guards, leave us. But, ma'am... I said, leave us. Of course, I apologise. Fuck, my guards have always been foolish. But I suppose I'm the foolish one for marrying that conniving. Come along, down these stairs. This is about to get interesting. Are we sure she's not arresting us? Now, Judas. Is this gum? What? It's ditto gum. It'll change your appearance. Hey, who wants to see who can blow the biggest bubble? Oh, you're on. Are you going to put that in your mouth or just stare at it? It depends. How are you guys feeling? That depends. How do I look? You're wearing a suit. You don't feel weird? Lightheaded, maybe? Nope. Try it. <laughs> We're real city slickers now. <laughs> <laughs> You're all dressed like my butlers. I thought it'd be a joke because of the whole butlers that murder a trope. Since you're accused killers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. Now, I want you to find my husband. He probably hasn't left the city yet, although he could be anywhere within it by now. And he definitely won't be in the park anymore. Okay. Sounds cool, I suppose. You're tasking us with this. Why all secrecy about it? The only way to prove that you didn't do it would be to prove that he did. And the only way to do that is to get a confession. We'll have hidden any evidence that could incriminate him. He's a politician himself, and this would severely damage his career. You're the only people that both care and are competent enough to do it. Do you think no one else heard the scream? Not to mention, my guards are really, really bad. Well, it's something to do. I'm in. But why the disguises? They're to prevent you from being killed on sight by my guards. If your guards are so incompetent, why do you still employ them? For show. Sure. I think you ought to change your security system. Perhaps I do. I don't try and understand you fancy folk. What do we get, though? For rewards, you'll receive 1,000 gold upon completion, and another 50 per week in my employment, if you can clear your names and want a job. Pay up front? Of course. Go into my vault. The password is Ioneary. That'll allow safe passage in and out for you and up to 1,000 gold each. They're in bags, grouped by the thousand. No shit. Nice. I'm one of the richest people in the city. Specifically, the richest woman. Before we go, do you have any idea where your husband may have gone? Any places he knows well and could be hiding in? He works a lot in the Erebus District and the Selene Observatory. You may want to check there. Thank you. Please, make haste.
The party emerge onto the street outside Litiercy's manor, with packs of ditto gum in their back pockets and a mission to complete. I live in the Erebus district. I can guide you through. Hey, look! I'm a sheriff! <laughs> oh my god. Are you sure we should be wasting that stuff? What? We might need authority and stuff. I'm Sheriff Rowan! Uh, hi, I'm Aura, and you're watching Magic Disney Channel. I'm, uh, Ferris. <laughs> Are we doing introductions? I'm, um, my friends call me Rin. Or they did. Kazmira Hadrian, cleric of Persephone. I'd just like to say, all of you are so pretty and I'm dying. A death cleric? Nice. Standing in the street behind them is a handsome, yet rugged man, with large muscles, dark skin, a scar over one eye, and a battle axe hoisted over one shoulder. He's wearing a lazy smile on his face that inspires the hearts of all that see it to beat faster, though whether with attraction or fear is hard to determine. Are you in need of a death cleric? My name is Alexander. Xander for short. I'm not in need of a death cleric at the moment, but it's rare to see one outside of the temple. I was gathering offerings for the temple. Not everything can be done within hollowed walls. Xander's a nice name. I'm Varys. You see a suspicious looking guy around here anywhere? Lady, this is the Erebus district. Everyone is suspicious and poor. Are you suspicious? I'm Sheriff Rowan! Yeah, I am. But I don't have to be. I don't mind it. I can be too. Apparently, we all are. Was he flirting? Was that flirting? I don't know. I'm dumb. If you're looking for someone, well, I might have seen him. I see a lot. Probably someone coming out of the trees, running, a real murder suspect look about him. Yeah, I saw someone like that. He's headed for the beach, talking about looking for the wave maker. Wave maker? We all make waves in the water, bud. No, you idiots. The wave maker. The ancient dragon of Hycantius. I was making jests. <laughs> I know who that is. Huh? <laughs> What would the wave maker have to do with anything? The wave maker is often summoned by the wizard the top, hoping to gain new magic. Still, what would a murder dude want with that? Why would this guy know? Unless he wants to do more murder. More murder is bad. We should probably stop that. Yes, you should. Yes. Murder is definitely a blight on the living world. <sighs> I know the way. I can take you there. Hey, handsome. Want to come solve a mystery with us? It's going to be a real adventure. Well, I ain't much of an adventure in time. Unless you want me to be, of course. Ferris, don't do it. I may take you up on that. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and sheriff. I have other plans tonight. Maybe I'll see you around. They split ways. A heroes follow Kasmira, who has promised them a shortcut to the beach. We need some swimsuits if we're going to the beach. Solving a murder mystery in a swimsuit a good idea. Hell yes. Before anyone can change, two burly dwarves with clubs emerge from the shadow beside Persephone's temple, eyeing our heroes with nasty sneers. Let's change at the beach. Letting them know we have magic gum could be bad. Well, 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 what are you ladies doing here at a time like this? That's none of your business! <laughs> you brought your kid?! Isn't it past your bedtime, little one? I'm Sheriff Rowan. Look, are we going to have a problem? Huh, that depends. How you feel about handing over all your valuables? Nobody's dumb enough to be walking through Erebus at this time of night with valuables we don't have anything to give you what a pain how about you hand over your snazzy suits instead then 
They look like they could fetch a fair penny. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a no-go, too. I guess we're doing this, then. I guess we are. Duck! What was that? Thunderclap! It's a spell! I think my aim was a little off! You think? It hit the temple! <laughs> uh, what did he just do with his hands? Fire charge. Looks like it's not his strong suit. Fire what? Wait, you don't know about- <laughs> Nice one, Rin. Uh, the other one's doing that weird hand thing. Should we be concerned? Hey, guys, do you maybe want to get the fuck out of here? <sighs> yeah, that's a good plan. Three, two, one, run. I think we lost them. Well... That went terribly. <laughs> Could've been worse. How did they do that thing? With their hands? Rowan, you don't know about elemental charges? Uh, no? Should I? Just to help you not to sound as incompetent as you just did? This world is made up of six elements. Fire, air, earth, water, light, and darkness. Everything and everyone within it contains at least a little of these elements. And we humanoids were given the power to control them by the gods. Everyone has elemental charges, one of each, every day. You might find some elements easier to wield than others. For example, I'm really good with light and its other side, creation, but fire isn't really my strong suit. Each element has two forms as well. Earth is also life. Light is also creation. And darkness is also destruction. Huh. Never heard of it before. Where'd you come from, kid? Well... Oh, oh no. Oh, oh god, no! R Rowan, get away from it! Ara, what's going on? Oh, this has been the Hycanthius Chronicles, Volume 1, Episode 1, Pilot. This episode was written by Laura Grace, Talis Reyes, Mitchell Falls, Oliver Sharp, Ash, and Carrie, and adapted for the format by Mitchell Falls. It stars the voice acting talents of Mitchell Falls as narrator, Talis Reyes as Rin, Robin Lee as Ara, Artemis Lanto as Rowan, Vin Joel as Varys, Michelle D as Casmira, Catherine Morrison as Magistrate Lyerses, and Laura Grace as Xander. Special thanks to Sne Catherine Yake for providing extra voices. The music in this episode was created by Laura Grace and Misha Falls. A full list of sound effect credits can be found on our Tumblr. Follow us on Tumblr at Hycanthius Chronicles and on Twitter at Hycanthius Pod. Episode 2 will be released October 14th. Thank you for listening. <laughs>